Hello, in this video we're talking about Newton's laws of motion, some classic physics right here. Uh, we're going to talk about the three laws, what you got to know about them and what they tell us about the nature of forces, because that's what it's all about. All right, so yes, they describe how the forces acting on a body affect its motion, right? What happens when forces act? How does that make stuff uh, change in terms of motion? Uh, you do need to know these. The IB is notorious for just giving you a question like state Newton's second law, and you just got to, you know, write it out. So um, on the base level, make sure you memorize these. But more than that, they do, uh, if you really understand these, these really help you conceptualize how forces work um, because a lot of it is counterintuitive. And even the laws uh, don't assume you know what they mean because they're, they're pretty deep. Uh, so what is a law anyway? We use the word law a lot. In science, um, all right, this is uh, getting into some nature of science kind of stuff, but essentially a law is just something that describes nature, uh, and it's like a statement it's or, or an equation or something like that. A law is brief, where a theory uh, is usually more involved, like a theory might incorporate multiple laws, but they're really not that different. Um, definitely, like, a law is not better than a theory, and nothing proves anything in science uh, if... If you hear the word prove in science, somebody is doing something wrong. Because um, that's not uh, how we operate, you know? We come up with uh, equation statements and say, uh, if this happens, then this should happen. And then we test it, right? So we make testable uh, predictions uh, in physics, usually in the form of mathematical equations. So fun. And you can make an equation and say, uh, well, the, the best we can describe, if I stick a marble in this launcher and put a cup right here, it should land in the cup and then we do it, and it does. Um, yeah, so a law is just uh, just that. So these are some statements about the world that describe how forces work, and they make predictions, and we see the consequences of these laws all over the place. All right. Um, all right, the whole law theory uh, thing and improving thing takes some time and some, uh, you know, mindset in terms of what we're what we're talking about here. But practically speaking, let's talk about the laws. All right, the first law, uh, you'll see me write them like this, N1L for Newton's first law, because we use them so much, they'll come up a lot. Here's the first law. That thing in the box is what you want to memorize. An object will remain in translational equilibrium unless acted upon by a net, aka unbalanced, force. Okay, uh, the common version of this is an object in motion tends to stay in motion, an object at rest tends to stay at rest. Translational equilibrium is a kind of quick, fancy way of saying all that stuff. What that means is, uh, this is a little weird, but translating in physics means moving in a straight line as opposed to like rotating, which is another kind of motion we'll get into. Translational motion is motion in a straight line, so this just means you're moving in a straight line the same way. Uh, at rest counts, you have a constant speed of zero if you're at rest. Yeah, so basically something that is moving will keep moving unless uh, there's a net force on it. That's not exactly what we're used to in everyday life because you're used to like if something's moving, it's eventually going to stop, but that's only because of stuff like friction, and air resistance. Those are net or unbalanced forces that can slow a thing down. Um, in space, if you throw something, it'll go forever and ever and ever and ever in a straight line and never stop. Um, you know, unless the infinitesimally small chance that it gets close enough to a planet or something that its gravity pulls on it. Uh, okay, here's just a simple example with an airplane. We got uh, to uh, zero net force, and so there's no unbalanced force, even though there's multiple forces. So this doesn't mean no force is acting on an object, right? It just means there's not a net force. So uh, we'll get into this a little bit more very soon when we talk about net force and FBDs and all this stuff, but essentially the idea is if you uh, are applying a thrust equal to your drag force, as the plane moves through the air, there's going to be a drag force. If the engines essentially... Uh, push enough that you get a thrust this way that's equal to the drag this way. There's no net force, and the plane will cruise at a constant speed. Uh, yeah, and stay at that speed until you, like, ease off the gas and slow down or hit the gas a little harder and speed up. Yeah, that's the idea. Okay, here are some fun examples of Newton's first law in motion. Skateboard stops. Person does not. Uh, skateboard stops. Person does not. All right, these are both examples where, uh, you know, some force acts on the skateboard, but maybe not on the person. And whoop, they go flying. Yeah, because they're moving. They're going to keep moving. You're going to keep moving until a force acts to stop it. 
Okay. The second law of motion is a weird one. You might think you know it, um, but the IB is very picky about it. Uh, officially, F equals MA is not the second law, even though everybody says it is, and that's practically what we'll use. Here's the second law exactly, um, which is how the IB is going to want you to say it. The net force acting on an object is equal to the rate of change of the object's momentum. Whoa. And so we have a rate of change here. Look at this, a gradient, uh, some kind of change in momentum over change in time. Uh, we haven't really done momentum yet. We'll get there. But um, anyway, in this case, this symbol sigma is going to represent the net force. It's like a math for, math symbol for sum. You might have seen this in math class when you add stuff up, like in a series or something. Um, so we'll do net force and free body diagram soon, where you, which is when you really do that. And we'll also get into momentum, but let's define just at least the equation for it. Uh, momentum is... A product, uh, the official definition of momentum, uh, is it just a math definition for this one? And it's a product of an object's mass and its velocity. It is a vector, and so the direction of your momentum will be in the same direction as your velocity, because you're multiplying, and that's how vector multiplying works. They'll both be in the same direction. Um, okay, so it's sometimes called like the quantity of motion. Uh, anyway, we'll do more with momentum for now. That's good enough. That's how you find momentum. All right, so really this equation says net force is equal to how quickly you're changing momentum, which is kind of nuts. But let's look at how that breaks down. If mass is constant, which is almost always the case in like the examples we're used to. Um, so if you have a constant mass, if the mass of the object isn't changing, then you can do some fun stuff. Uh, there will be some times where mass is not constant, like in a rocket ship where it's constantly losing mass by uh, spitting out like a very, very large percentage of its mass as fuel. Um, okay, so as long as that nothing like that is happening and the mass of the thing isn't changing, here's what I would do. For change in momentum over change in time, a change I can always do final minus initial. So that's what we're doing here. The formula for momentum at the end, formula for momentum at the beginning. Here I'm just using F and I for final and initial. Do something fancy like factor out an M. And then I got the difference in the velocities. Well, I would call that a change in velocity. So I get m delta v over delta t. Hey, look at this. This looks familiar. That looks very familiar. That's the definition of acceleration, and that's where we get net force equals ma. Okay, so this is like the main consequence uh, we can say of Newton's second law, so much so that most anywhere else you look outside of the IB, everybody's like, yeah, Newton's second law, it's f equals ma. All right, because you use this so much. All right, so F equals MA comes from this, and you just want to know F equals MA comes out of Newton's second law as long as mass is constant, right? If mass is changing, we'll get into some of those, but we're going to have to use this version. You can't use this if M is not a constant. Okay, so that's the second law. And the third law is the trickiest one. Um, okay, here's the third law. It's a whole mouthful. The way you usually hear it is this. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Uh, the long version is up there. When one object exerts a force on a second object, the second object simultaneously exerts a force equal in magnitude and opposite direction to the first object. Okay. This is where that whole idea of a force being a one thing pushing or pulling on another thing is super important, and understanding the two objects is super important to what's happening. here. All right, Newton's third law is very tricky because... We're going to be more used to looking at all the forces on one object. These are forces on two different objects. Okay, so here's how to think of it. You have to do this for Newton's third law problems. I promise if you don't force your brain to think in this way, you will definitely, definitely screw up the Newton's third law problems. All right, this is Newton's third law as it's written. So the force of object A on B is equal to the force of object B on A. Whenever there's a thing A pushing on a thing B, thing B will push on thing A exactly the same amount in every case, always and forever. Crazy. And the negative sign means they're in opposite directions. So if thing A pushes on B to the right, thing B will push on A to the left exactly as much as A is pushing on B. All right, I promise it's true. Always, always, always. All right, so let's look at some examples of this because this is, again, much trickier than it looks. Don't trust your brain. There's a lot of times in physics where you can like trust your gut. This is not a time to trust your gut. Your gut will steer you wrong with Newton's third law almost always. Okay, so let's look at some examples. Say pushing on a chair. 
all right pushing down in a chair um here this fine gentleman this dude is pushing on the chair kind of down and to the right and the rule would be so this is the force if it's an like applied force i want to you know name the two objects and i decided to name them dude and chair uh okay so the dude is pushing on the chair down and to the right newton's third law says all i do is i do that's a on b a is dude chair is b i flip them it must be the same size as the force of the chair on the dude and it is all right it really is those two forces are exactly as the mutt, exactly uh, the same as each other. All right, now to the dude who's got his feet planted and has uh, probably got more mass than the chair, you know, that's not really going to push him backwards or anything, but the chair will move forwards because the chair has a lower mass. Probably the dude is pushing, hopefully, uh, in a way, although maybe not here, to, you know, work around friction where he's planting his feet to get friction helping him out. But those two forces are the same. And if you push on something, that's the force you feel. You, like, push on the table in front of you, you can't feel the force of you on the table because it's on the table, yeah? What you feel is the table pushing back on you. I mean, push down, you can feel it. It's like an upward pressure on your palm, no? That's the force. The same force you're applying to the table, the table's applying to you. Okay, always the same. Uh, here's another silly one. This is how paddling works. Uh, all right, if you uh, get yourself in a canoe and you want to paddle, what do you do? You stick an oar in the water, and guess how this works? You pull backwards, so the oar pushes on the water this way. Guess what? That means the water is pushing forwards on your oar. It's true. That's what's happening, and that's what makes the thing move. Okay? Um, same deal if you want to do this fancy, uh, you know, underwater turnaround thing that the uh, swimmers do. Yeah? Or just, uh, you know, you push off the wall underwater. Um, here's what happens. Here's how that works. And this is also like how jumping works. Uh, this is a little more fun. You push backwards on the wall so that the wall pushes forwards on you. That's what makes the person move, right? The downward push won't make this person move left. There must be a force to the left, and this is what it is. And it's always A on B, B on A, right? So force of feet on wall, force of wall on feet. Dude on chair, chair on dude. Uh, or on water, water on or. Okay, it's always that way. All right, so that's kind of the rules for Newton's third law. Here's some uh, examples. This is a pretty good one where you can see it. When, you know, you hit a baseball with a baseball bat, for sure the ball is being pushed to the right, yeah? Well, if there's a force of bat on ball to the right, there must be a force of ball on bat to the left. And there is, look, boom, right there, right? Right when there's contact, you can see the bat being pushed to the left, yeah? And the same amount that the bat is pushed to the left, the ball is pushed to the right. It's the same amount. The thing is that force makes a big difference to a little baseball. The bat has a lot more mass and is being held by this person, so it's not going to go flying backwards, even though it's pushed to the left the same amount as the baseball is pushed to the right. More canoe fun. All right, uh, this is silly, but this will happen. If you jump off of a boat or a canoe or something, right? To do that, you have to push backwards on the boat so that the boat pushes forward on you. I mean, again, this is like how walking works or jumping. It's just uh, the ground doesn't really move because it's, uh, you know, very big and attached to stuff. Ultimately attached to probably a bunch of concrete underground. Um, but yeah, if you want to jump forwards, you push backwards. Or if you just want to take a step forwards, you push backwards with your foot so that the ground pushes forwards on you. In a case like this, you can see the result of you pushing backwards on the thing to make that force forward. So force a person on canoe equals force a canoe on person, which makes them uh, get to the dock there. Okay, and last, the classic. There you go. Um, a little bit of cartoon physics happening here, but this is the... This idea is definitely right, that as the fire extinguisher pushes out the extinguishing stuff, the extinguishing stuff pushes back on the fire extinguisher the same amount. Uh, okay, I probably wouldn't go that fast. That's uh, some Simpsons physics right there. But for sure, that is the case. All right. So see if you can do that. See if you can use Newton's third law to answer this question. This is a common question that the IB likes to ask on like a paper or one, like a multiple choice question. So can you identify it? You're sitting in your chair right now. There is a pull downwards on you. We call it your weight, right? So you have a weight pulling. There's a force pulling down on you. Using Newton's third law, what force will always and forever 
be equal to your weight, right? Um, go ahead, take a minute, try and think of that through and answer what it would be. Okay, the temptation, the wrong answer is B, and also A and C. Uh, the answer is D. D, because weight is the force of the earth on you. And so the only other force that's always the same is the force of you on the earth. You got to do A on B, B on A. Um, okay, and it's true. The chair's upward push on you. Yes, there might be a moment if you're sitting there, um, the chair might be pushing up on you as much as the earth is pulling down on you, as though probably not because your feet like are probably on the ground. Uh, then those aren't the same, right? Or if you just like stand up from the chair, yeah? If you're not on the chair, the chair's push on you is not equal to the earth's pull on you. The earth's pull on you, though, is always equal to your pull on the earth. And that fact is kind of amazing, but it's true. Um, you know, so if the earth pulls on you, whatever your weight is, the number on the scale, you know, uh, you pull up on the earth exactly that same amount. Uh, just the fact is to the earth that, uh, you know, little little bit of weight is really nothing to the big gigantic earth whereas for you but uh you know pretty significant okay all right so that's how you do newton's third law force of a on b force of b on a you have to do it that way those are newton's laws right a little complicated but very fun to think about so i will leave you to uh ruminate on that and think it through have fun <laughs>